All right, all right, all right. Welcome, 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 welcome to our second week of our Black History Month a series of discussions and conversations around the theme, Our Story, Our Song. I am Reginald, Rev, Reverend Dr. Reginald Williams, Jr. I am the Reverend Dr. William Marcus Small, and this is Bible Study Wednesday night. We are grateful to share with you all. Uh, in the words of my dear friend, let's get started how things go. Uh, we are grateful to share in this moment. We want to greet everybody who shares with us on Zoom tonight and everybody who's sharing with us on Facebook Live. Um, we are excited tonight as we are in the second, um, uh, the second lesson and we are sharing in terms of continuing to understand and to wrestle with the spiritual significance of liberation in uh, the African-American experience through song. We understand how song is indeed a blessing and how it is continues to encourage and feed us in so many different ways. And so we're going to not waste a whole lot of time, but we're going to go ahead and get to it. Uh, and we're going to have a word of prayer and get started. So why don't we do that uh, right now? God, we love you. We are grateful for this time, grateful for the opportunity to just worship and to share and to grow. Thank you for study, God. Thank you for expanding our minds. Thank you for expanding possibility in front of us that we might walk into it, those places of greatness, those places of hope, those places of understanding, that our spiritual journey might be enriched, that our lives might be uh, encouraged, and that we might even be transformed in moments like these. So bless us that what we do is fruitful, that what we do is beneficial to you, and what we do ultimately, God receives your glory. It is in the wonderful name of your son who paid the price that we say amen and amen. Amen. Right, so we're going to kick it uh, like good fellas, man, um, and just do a little uh, backdrop, do a quick review. Uh, so again, we are uh, talking uh, about uh, our music. We're talking about music in the African-American experience and how different in how many ways uh, it reveals itself. And so uh, music, understanding that music is incredibly influential. We've said that, uh, that we understand how significant music is in our lives. It is integral and in how we do things all over in different places. Uh, and so we create these soundtracks in our lives because music affects us in different places and in different ways. We said last week uh, that music does a few things. That music inspires us, it moves us uh, to challenge new things, it moves us to be motivated in certain things, it informs us, it gives us information, gives us instruction, and it can be educating um, in terms of what we learn and what we hear and what we come to understand. It can instruct us in terms of what we know, in terms of what the world is going on, on and how things are happening and understanding different people's experiences and different people's plights. Uh, and it invites us. It invites us to experience and express ourselves differently. It invites us to have different expression. And I think uh, it is important tonight that we are talking about expression and as we uh, engage in what we call rhythm and blues and deal with the history of rhythm and blues that and and you know blues music and its origins and how it all evolved to this point that we're talking about expression because tonight that is exactly the kind of music that we as people understand uh, that the expression of the rhythm and blues genre so it is a motivational tool it is an inspirational tool it is a restorative tool it is a revolutionary tool uh, music and the arts always continue to feed us and direct us and so we're glad and grateful uh, for this opportunity opportunity to, to share uh, because it helps us in so many different things. And so uh, my brother is going to start uh, and engage us and talk about uh, this, this R&B phenomenon that many of us are familiar with. Now, listen, let's just say a couple of disclaimers like we did last week. Number one, we are not musicologists. All right. So, you know, those of you who are music experts or musicologists or whatever, um, we are not 
claiming to be the authority or anything. We are doing simply what we've come to understand and research and feel uh, when we talk about music. And so there's going to be a lot of feeling tonight. There's going to be, it's going to be a little bit, you know, there's going to be some movement. There's going to be some, 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 some emotive uh, stuff that happens tonight because that's just what music does. It's supposed to move. It's supposed to uh, evoke certain emotion. Um, and also, you know, this is um, of, of where we are stretching you. If, if, if for some of those, there may be uh, who need to be stretched tonight. Uh, you know, um, if I don't, I don't think so. Uh, knowing who we are uh, as pastors and uh, preachers and theologians and scholars and what we do in terms of our practical idea, our congregations know us. Now, there may be some people who are watching on Facebook who 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 glance by and and are you know kind of you know taken aback or aghast at what we talk about tonight, but what we will be dealing with is the thread of understanding uh, the sacred and the secular in our Africanness um, are not separate. They do indeed merge, they do indeed come together. And we celebrate that. I know Dr. Williams celebrates that. I know I celebrate that. Um, so I say all that to say, you can act holy if you want to. You can act holy if you feel like it. You can act holy um, and act like you're just so surprised that you know these preachers are talking um, spirituality in R and B. But I promise you, at the very least, you your interest will be piqued at understanding what we are talking about tonight. And so, uh, Dr. Williams is going to continue to share with us and give us some insight into what's going on, so that we can grow in this thing. Thank you, Dr. Small. So, just going back to the fourth, what's that? The fifth, the fourth kind of component of setting things up. One of the things that uh, Dr. Small said is that music informs and invites. That was two and four. And so we're going to talk about the informing piece a little bit later on, but I want to talk about the invites piece because just for a second, because the fact of the matter is when we talk about particularly R&B, uh, R&B music, and I'll, I'll get into it a little bit deeper in a minute, but when we talk about R&B and he talks, and, and Dr. Small says how it helps us paint pictures into worlds, let's, let's remember that um, you know, if we dealt if we dealt with a piece with regard to R and B, we would need the rest of the year to deal with all the right. different types of R and B. Right? right? We are focusing our lens on liberation and and freedom types of R and B. But I mean, come on, if 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 somebody hears Prince, you know, until the end of time, I'll be there for you. You own my heart and my mind. I truly adore you. Come on, that's gonna put you on one. You know, that's gonna put you in a mood, right? That's gonna put you in a place. If you hear if you hear something else, Earth you know, by Jim. Earth, Wind, and Fire, Love's Holiday. Earth, Wind, and Fire, like Love's Holiday, right? Would you mind? I mean, come on, that's going to put you in a, that's going to put you in a whole nother thing, right? If you hear, if you hear something by Jill Scott, when you're going through some stuff, Rhythm and Blues, and she sings, she sings, because I'm lonely when you're around. I mean, man, who hasn't felt that, right? And so all of these different, there are a whole lot of different ways we could go with it, but we're going tonight uh, with this whole piece around liberation. Uh, and freedom. Um, and so when you think about liberation and freedom, think about, you know, uh, Cameo saying, you're talking out the side of your neck. Think about Cameo saying, it must be, a, it must be, it must be a moral or a sin if it's according to the skin I'm in, right? Think about those things, I think, and the theological backing that comes with it. And so we're going to deal with that too, because there is a theology in it, because as, as Dr. Small has already said, uh, from an African perspective and from an African ontological perspective, there is no separation between sacred and secular, right? And we're gonna we're gonna share a little bit of a little bit of that tonight. All right. So as we move into this R and B piece, something should be said up front um, of the role that creatives play in the time and especially in times of social upheaval and revolution. So particularly tonight when we're talking about uh, creators, we're talking about songwriters, we're talking about musicians, we're talking about, and that, that doesn't just go for R&B, that's going, we're going to talk about it, you know, when we talk about hip hop, when we talk about jazz, certainly when we talk about reggae, but there's something that needs to be said, and we can talk about it in terms of how we dealt with spirituals last week, something should be said of the roles that creatives play in times of social upheaval and revolution in particular, right? Not only in the biblical times, but now, right? And I offer that because I submit to you that in times of social unrest and in times of social upheaval, watch this. It's the artists and the creatives of our culture that many times lead the way in terms of broadening our imagination 
in terms of broadening our psyche, in terms of broadening what could be in order uh, that we may be all we, we've been created to be. And so it's, it's, it's the creatives that give us poetry, right? We can think about uh, the, the, certainly the Harlem Renaissance. We can think about the Nikki Giovannis. We can think about the, 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 um, the um, Maya Angelou's. We can think about Zora Neale, right? We can think about, so we can think about poetry. Then we can think about the creatives. We talk about writings. We talk about Zora Neale Hurston. We talk about Toni Morrison. We talk about uh, the who did the bluest eye? Uh, not bluest eye, Tony Morris. Who did um, Devil in the Blue Dress? Uh, Walter Mosley, right? We talk about we talk about artwork. We talk about artwork. Kehinde Wiley. We talk about um, we talk about street artists, even in terms of graffiti. We talk about that when we get to hip hop. But we talk about street artists, right? We talk about Ramo, right? What Ramo saying? B Street. If art if art is a crime, then I'm guilty of something like that, right? right. And yeah. certainly, and certainly we talk about music, right? We talk about music and this whole phenomenon of R&B. When we think about R&B, the emergence of R&B as a musical category, did a little research. I'm not an ethnomusicologist, nor do I play one on TV. But the, the emergence of R&B as a musical category is dated back to late 30s, early 40s and following. And, and it's named primarily in terms of, and this is important to note, because this comes out of uh, something I said last week in terms of things coming out of a context, right? Understanding the context, R&B comes out, rhythm and blues um, comes out of a context, just like forms of art and music come out of a context, right? Um, I, I was looking at one meme, uh, Doc, I, and I know you've probably seen it. It says, um, and you talked about it last week in terms of people appropriating or co-opting the forms and the styles of music that we have, but they say they want our rhythm, but they don't want our blues, right? right. And the rhythm and blues comes out of these particular types of experiences that we have, right? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of one of my favorite movies, The Five Heartbeats. I should have brought it up to show it, but in The Five Heartbeats, when they had when they made that song, um, I Got Nothing But Love For You, and in order to try to get it to sell, the record company wanted to have you know, five five white white brothers come in and there was no rhythm to it. No, you know, it was different, not deficient. Ain't got no money. Whoa. <laughs> no fancy car. Right. <laughs> so so you had you had this code, but but it comes out, it comes rhythm and blues comes out of um an article I read out of three contexts, three particular contexts, just like forms. The first context is um, and it really can be start, uh, morphed into two, but uh, World War One and World War Two mo mo merging those together. And what rhythm and blues comes out of is this great migration from the South to the North, mm -hmm. all right? So the development of R&B is closely intertwined with the growth of 20th century African-American urban communities in cities like Chicago, LA, New York, Memphis, Detroit, um, which became these geographical centers for persons who moved from down south to up north, right? And so they brought with them their music, they brought with them all of these stuff. And so in concert with these shifts and, and simultaneously with these shifts in population from some rural to urban, right? Many forms of African-American culture that were expressive in nature, especially music, uh, made their transitions into into urban environments, into the marketplace, into uh, schools, into communities, into churches, right? Um, and so, watch. And, and just as a side note, if you look at migration maps, right, of that great migration, you'll find that those on the eastern seaboard from like Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, they made their way up to places like D.C., Philly, New York, Jersey, and points north, right, boss, right? If you look at the center of the country, if you look at those maps, you're talking about Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, right? Most of them went straight up um, what is now I-65, right? And you land in Chicago or Milwaukee or Detroit or even going over east a little bit more to like Cleveland and some, some of those places, right? Um, and then if you if you go a little bit southwest 
And you got places like Louisiana. You got places, and some of Louisiana came, you know, central, central, but some went west. So you got places like Louisiana and Texas. They go west to uh, places like California and, um, and points north, right? And so that's just a little bit of a piece with regard to that that shift in migration, right? Um, a good book to to see how that to see some of the intricacies of that is called The Warmth of Other Suns by, uh, what is her name? Uh, uh, I wish I, the, we'll yeah, we'll find it. The Warmth we of Other Suns. We got producers. We got producers, that's right. Um, <laughs> help, me, help me out, producers. But The Warmth of Other Suns is, is a good way, is a good, uh, a, good, a good book that deals with some of that. So World War One and Two that dealt with the great migration from the South to the North this whole leader, this movement where folks came north to find a better way and uh, and to get away from the searing heat of oppression. And then but they still bring, you know, that that note of understanding that, um, you know, we're coming out of oppression. We still end up is just not the same as it was down south. So that's one. Right. The second that's one and two. The third one is then uh, another uh, close Isabel, Isabel Wilkerson. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, one of other sons. Another uh, key component with regard to uh, development of R&B is civil rights movement, right? The development of R&B intertwined with the growth of Black communities in those places that came out of civil rights movement, right? And so you'll even remember, uh, history buffs will remember, that when SCLC went to go on the road, you saw it in, in, in Aretha Franklin, you saw a reference in the, in the movie on Aretha Franklin uh, with, with Jennifer Hudson. But you'll see how R and B um, King King and and, his, and and SCLC were having concerts to raise money, right? And so there was this connection with R and B that was connected to civil rights movement. And watch this movement music. So you're talking about Aretha, talking about respect, all that 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 covers a lot of. Life. You're talking about Curtis Mayfield, keep on pushing. You're talking about the sidelights, right? For God's sake, we got to give more power to the people. You're talking about all of these different types of movement music James that Brown. not only said, said James Brown, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. We're going to delve into that um, in particular uh, in a little bit, right? And so all of these different pieces of, um, of, of context help bring forth this whole thing around R&B, right? It's, it's, particularly in the way of liberation, right? And, and freedom talk, all right? And so it's important that we understand that that context is there because we can liken that to contextual pieces in scripture, right? Um, in your Bible, you got movement music. Mm -hmm. in, in your Bible, you got movement music, right? Um, from Psalm, Psalm 118, Psalm 113 through 118, is something Egyptian scholars have named the Egyptian Hallel. Mm -hmm. The Egyptian Hallel is a group of songs that were written and sung by the people of God when they were saved from slavery. Read some of those songs and read it in that context of people who have been saved from slavery, right? The Egyptian Hallel is songs of praise that were sung by the people after going through hell. Mm -hmm. It was sung to, watch this, very important, because this, 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 go, this goes across not only uh, R and B, but also uh, biblical scripture, right? Um, the Egyptian Hillel was sung by people of God. Watch this, so that they can recall their story, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. our story, our song. This is my story. This is my, our story. They could recall their story and who saved them. And these songs were also sung at some of their big and important. Um, uh, celebrations like Passover, like the Festival of Booths, um, like like Pentecost, right? These songs were sung and the lyrics were written and they were sung so that the people remembered their story so they didn't forget where they came from. And so that's movement music, not only in terms of um, uh, R&B, but also in terms of uh, the Egyptian Hillel, right? These song, the songs that these people tell come out of a context and it just goes back to what we shared last week in terms of us quoting uh, Dr. Jeremiah Wright, I, my pastor, when he said that the songs of a people tell the story of a people. The songs of a people tell the story of a people. We're going to get into it much more next week when we talk about hip, well, in the next couple of weeks when we talk about hip hop, but the songs of a people tell the story of a people. All right? 
Um, so Dr. Small talking about us coming out of a context. Oh, well, I'll do I'll do some of this now before we go, before we go to Dr. Small. So Dr. Small referenced the song a little bit earlier. Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. If you have never heard Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud, I'm going to play it in a minute. But if you've never heard Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud, you need to go on YouTube as soon as this is over and or, or download it some kind of way and listen to it. So what's the context out of which this comes, right? This song was this song came out in 1968, right? What happened in 1968? February 1st, Echo Cole and Robert Cole get killed in Memphis, which means King then goes, he's kid, goes to Memphis. Because King says, it, people didn't want me to go, but it's not so much what happens to me if I go to Memphis. It happens, it's, what, it's what happens to those garbage workers if I don't go to Memphis. So he goes, he says that I, he says the, I've been to the mountaintop speech on April 3rd, April 4th. He's killed, which is actually one year to the day after his Riverside speech um, uh, with regard to uh, the war in Vietnam. So he, King is killed in Memphis in April. Kennedy is killed in June. And then watch this. Don't forget this. The Olympics in Mexico City happened in 68, where John Carlos and Tommy Smith are sent home for throwing up the Black Power sign, right? This is a major time of major upheaval, right? And so all of them, a lot of the music coming out, a lot of the writing coming out, and particularly one of the songs that came out was that dog on James Brown, Say It Loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. And I'm gonna I'm gonna play just a little bit for you, and then we're gonna move um, to uh, Doctor Small. Hold on, let me play just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. It's your bad self. Out of here. It's hard to hear. It's going in and out. Can you hear? Going in and out. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud is the name of the song, but it comes out of a context again. Movement music comes out of a context of all that was going on in terms of social up upheaval. And so, again, the 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 uh, artists and creators of the day kind of bring forward um, um, and our leaders in kind of a, with movement music to 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 broaden our imagination and our activity in terms of what we can do and what can happen. All right. So with that, Dr. Small, what, what you got for me? So. Um... You know, James Brown, even even talking about James Brown, soul power, right? What we want, soul power, what we need, you know, soul power, right? right. Like the whole idea of, of what it meant. And it's all about identity. And it's about affirming identity in the moment of when that is contrary. And I think, I think Doc, that is incredibly important right now. Um, um, so because uh, we are in a, in a cultural context where the pushback um, to negate being is so prevalent right now. I mean, Absolutely. they're pushing back voting rights, they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're moving, um, they're trying with this, with this whole idea about teaching critical race theory or whatever that means yeah. in terms of school, like pushing back, just removing a whole sense of identity in who uh, Black people are. And so it's important to understand what the context is because the context was much like right now. The context was much like right now and what was happening and what was taking place. And so um, what contrary to popular belief, um, R&B songs uh, have themes. They, they speak to the theme of freedom and they still point, even though they have this R&B operation, they have this R&B feeling, they still point to the divine. They still speak to a sense of identification and a sense of the divine. Um, so R&B, as we understand it, is an evolution. It is an evolutionary uh, music that it is incredibly American. We need to recognize that. It is incredibly American in sense of its organic development and how it came together. Um, it is an evolution 
evolution of what are considered work songs uh, and what are also called is another term called field hollers. And there were songs that were mm -hmm. that were uh, expressed or sung in the field a cappella. There were songs that were expressed um, because they they not only motivated people to do what they needed to do and keep time in terms of work, but they were also songs of inspiration. They were also songs that generated inspiration, also reminded people of things, also gave people information. And so out of the field holler and out of uh, the work song of the enslaved African came this movement of race music, what they call race music. They did not, they didn't know, uh, they didn't identify it as R&B early. It became this thing called race music uh, because it was defined by black folks singing and they were called race records they were called race records and so you have bessie smith you have ma rainey you had howlin wolf you had muddy waters um and these are the precursors uh through race music of now you got ray charles and um uh, those who evolve as a result of the music later on as it moves forward to bring a sense of identity, to bring a sense of joy, and to literally bring a sense of strength to African American people. So rhythm and blues ultimately is about the expression of emotion. It is about the expression of emotion. This is incredibly important. This is incredibly significant because what has happened in the divide, in the Western divide of spirituality, it is looked to separate emotion, right? From now, if, from, from the religious experience. And what I mean by that, when I say that, in terms of separating the, the experience of, of, of emotion, is, is that somehow or another, you were taught not to em embody or embrace your spirituality with your whole self, right? That your spirituality needs to be looked at from a very intellectual space, right? And separate your body and your expression and your feeling and your emotion from it all. Now, here's the thing. In Pentecostal movements and charismatic movements, that did not happen, right? Pentecostal movements and, and charismatic movements, we, we continued, Black folk continued to be expressive. They continued to be demonstrative with their bodies. They continued to be emotive. They continued to feel, right? And from this particular place, what happens is what we go to that emotive place from our Pentecostal traditions and our more charismatic traditions. And what happens is in our more traditional uh, Baptist, Methodist, and you know, those traditions, what happens is people then go secular, right, in their music and their song and their expression. And so they express themselves on Saturday night, right, and listen to a whole bunch of movement, but then they get into church, they get got it, they got into church, and they became very stoic, they became very still, they became very non-emotive, they became very linear, and what happened was they began to polarize the whole idea of spiritual spirituality in terms of music began to polarize and separate uh, folks from a sense of understanding that they could express themselves with their whole bodies, with their whole selves, that they could feel, they could actually feel what they were singing, they could feel uh, what was happening with God. They could feel the presence of God moving and they could feel and share um, they were doing. And now we're kind of moving back to that um, with um, this, this idea of praise music and praise and worship and all of that kind of thing. We are, we are beginning to talk about what that looks like in terms of this sense of corporation. Right? And so it's about the expression. Rhythm and blues has been about the expression of emotion, which for many folk has been dangerous, right? That the feelings of expression in R&B because, because of all of the emotions that come with that. R&B, you can talk about being in love. Right, R and B. You can talk about being angry at something. R and B. You can talk about being sad. Right, when we talk about how the blues evolved. Right, the articulation. When James Cone says that the 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 blues is um, a spiritual, um, you know, the blues is the secular. Uh, gospel song. It is the secular spiritual. It speaks to a sense of spirituality in that, in that, in the secular sense. And so it speaks to a whole host and a bunch of emotions that people deal with on a daily basis. And, and R&B does that. R&B affirms what you feel. R&B affirms it. And it's a very scary thing because people can take that and go a whole lot of different ways with that. It speaks to the dozens of emotions that people deal with every day. And in actuality is an incredibly African. It is incredibly uh, an African presence because it is 
all of those feelings. It is a myriad of feelings. And from the African idea, from the African idea from the continent, our spirituality, and you've heard us say this over and over and over again, our spirituality is not separated from our secular life, from our everyday life. God is in everything from the African perspective. God is in everything. God's presence is in everything. God's presence is in the tree that is chopped down uh, for shelter and, and heat and for, for to make firewood. God's presence is in the animals that are killed in order to eat so that we might survive. God's presence is in the weather and, and in the farming and in the articulation and the movement and the navigation of agriculture. God is in it all. And so when we operate in moments, we don't operate that God is not in it, but God is always in it and God is continuing to move. Um, and so rhythm and blues forces us. It forces us to feel. It forces us to engage in a sense of feeling and in a sense of being. And so understanding these emotions would also mean that we have to speak to the humanity that's in us, right? So Speaking to these emotions is not about negating what we feel, but talking about how then does God operate and how does God move in our feelings and in our emotions and in what's going on around us? And what does God have to say about that? What does the spirit have to say? How does the spirit speak to my loneliness? How does the spirit speak to my anger in moment? How does the Lord speak or the spirit speak to my breakup or to my, the whole idea of being in love? And what we've done is we've compartmentalized that and removed that as if God can't be present in those moments when we understand in our story, God has always been present in all of our moments. And so uh, in the sacred text, we also see these emotions expressed, but we rarely acknowledge it. We rarely talk about it. We rarely wrestle with those things to understand what's really happening and what's really going on and how that affects and how that ultimately affects us. But it does in all aspects speak to our level of condition. Okay, so here it is. We're going to have some fun. I need everybody who's watching, everybody who's sharing to just kind of shake your shoulders and get loose because we're going to have some fun. We're going to do some comparison and we're going to wrestle with some things. We're going to wrestle with some ideas and we're going to get involved and see what happens in terms of looking at the particular sacred text and looking at um, how we wrestle and understand R&B and our spiritual selves as well. All right. So those of y'all uh, who are kicking it, y'all got your Bibles in front of you. Turn to Psalm 16. Turn to Psalm 16 uh, and look at verses 5 through 11. Psalm 16, verses 5 through 11. It says, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen from me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will I let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with your joy and your presence with eternal pleasure at your right hand. So he's talking about this relationship. He's talking about the joy. The, the writer of the psalm is talking about being in step with God and it bringing them a sense of joy. It brings them a sense of joy to be in step with God, to understand all of the things God has done, to understand all of the things God has presented, to understand all of the things God says you can be. Those things are powerful. Those things uh, have brought joy and understanding a reinforcement to who they are and how how they walk in the presence of God, right? That's what Psalm 16 verses 5 through 11 says, right? So now listen to these words here. Listen to these words. Right, and if you catch, and if you catch the song, if you catch the song, put it in the put it in the uh, comment section, and you'll get a prize. We'll clap for you. That's the prize you're gonna get. But if you catch the song, put it in put it in the comment section before it's done. It says, "I'm holding on to my freedom. Can't take it from me. I was born into it. It comes naturally. I'm strumming my own freedom, playing the God in me, representing His glory. Hope He's proud of me." right? Uh, Jill Scott, living my life like it's golden. Jill Scott says that this joy, this understanding 
There you go. There you go. D understanding that, I'm, that, I, that I understand this connection because of this connection, because I understand the value of who I am. I'm living my best life. I'm living a life that's golden. I'm living my life true to form. I'm living my life true to sense of who I am. And because I'm able to do all of this because of my relationship, because of my connection, because of who I'm in step with and who God is ultimately. And so the, the R&B song, right, even though it's secular, speaks still to the same relationship, speaks to the same connection, speaks to the same understanding of being in step with the divine. The joy that is expressed based upon the understanding that God is in control and moving in the process. And because of that identification, because of that relationship, because of that connection, they're encouraged to experience joy, right? What does it mean for us? What does it mean for us to live our lives like it's golden? What does it mean for us to faithfully engage in relationship and connection with the divine? How would, I, how would our relationship be different, right? If every day we woke up and said, I'm living my life like it's golden. How would our relationship and our walk and our perspective be different? Right. If we just wrestle with the whole idea that God, because we're we're, we're playing, we're, we're strumming the music in the tune of the God in us. Right. And that we can represent that we can do that and, and honor that with a sense of joy. Right. So it's understanding the meaning behind it, because, it, again, it's about the feeling. It's about the emotion. It's about the connection. So listen, we're going to do it again. All right. So if you catch the song, if you catch the song, put it in the put it in the. Comment section real quick, and we'll applaud you. We'll clap for you. That's the, that's the prize. That's all you get. So the writer of Psalm 126, right? Listen, he talks about his sorrow. He talks about how his sorrow has turned to joy, right? Psalm 126, verses 4 through 6. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping carry seed to grow will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. All right, now, listen to this song. Listen to, listen to the R&B translation. L listen to the remix. Sometimes devotion, sometimes deceit. The ones that you care for give you so much pain. But oh, it's all right. They're both one and the same. Don't it seem we go through life going up and down? Seems that things turn you on and turn you around, always hurting each other. If it ain't one thing, it's another. But when the world is down on you, love somewhere around, well, it seems to me that joy and pain are like sunshine and rain. Joy and pain like sunshine and rain. Oh, over and over, we can be sure, is this my part, right? That there will be sorrow but you will endure. Where there's a flower, there's the sun and the rain. Oh, but it's wonderful. Why? Because they're both one and the same. All right, there you go, Sister Monique Adams, there she go again. Joy and Pain by Frankie Beverly and Mays, right? That the secular speaks to that, right? That we understand, right? <laughs> that we understand, yeah, he was, he was dangerous. That, but we understand right? That the, that, the, that the joy of understanding how life works, that life works. The psalmist in the text says, listen, sorrow is going to come, but joy is going to show up. Sorrow is going to come, but if you plant the seed, right? Joy, the, the, the seeds that you plant produce joy, right? And Frankie Beverly and Mays engage in the same thing, right? Listening to the undying love of God, the writer understands that he is God's creation and that there's possibility even in the hard times that they don't last always. All right. So let's do it. We're gonna go again. We're gonna go again. I think this is, I think this is Dr. Williams the way he lives. I think this is his wheelhouse right here. Psalm 139, right? Verses 7 through 12. Psalm 139, verses 7 through 12 says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. And if I make my bed in the depths, the traditional text says in Sheol, meaning if I go to hell, you are right there. If I rise on the wings of dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light becomes night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Now, understand, listen to this. 
Listen to this. Here we go again. Here go to, here's the remix. We all know sometimes life hates and troubles can make you wish you were born in another time and place. But you can bet your lifetimes as twice as double that God knew exactly where he wanted you to be placed. So make sure when you say you're in it and not of it, you're not helping to make this earth a place sometimes called hell. Change your words into truth and then turn that truth into love and maybe our children's grandchildren and their great grandchildren will tell that I'll be loving you until the rainbow burns the stars out in the sky. Loving you until the ocean covers every mountain high. Loving you until the dolphin flies and parrots live at sea. Loving you until we dream of life and life becomes a dream. Loving you until the day, that night and night becomes the day. Loving you until the trees and seas just up and fly away. Loving you until the day that eight times eight times eight is four. Loving you until the day, that is the day that are no more. Loving you until the day the earth starts turning right to left. Loving you until the earth just for the sun denies itself. Loving you until mother nature says her work is through. Loving you until the day that you are me and I am you. Now, ain't that loving you? Unmute yourself, Doc. Uh, unmute yourself, Doc. Unmute yourself, Rick. Unmute yourself, Rick. Yeah, these technical difficulties is giving me the blues around here. But listen, the, so the, the, the part about that, particularly when we talk about freedom, right? right? Working from the inside out is when he gets to the bridge and he says all this stuff that we don't know what he's talking about, right? Because he's going so fast. He says, he says, uh, we all know sometimes life's pains and troubles. Did you just say that part? Did I miss that yeah, part? Yeah, 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 yeah. You just said that part? I just did the bridge, yeah. You just did the bridge. But what that, what that bridge, what that bridge says is it goes back to that Psalm 139 in terms of living into who it is that we've been created to you, we've been created to be, right? And that's where freedom starts, right? It works from an inside out. Liberation works, it starts on the inside and works itself out. If we're looking outside for liberation to come, it'll never come. Talk, right? say that part. Stay right there. Stay right there. <laughs> if, we do, if we because if we if we look for um uh here it is. If we look for others to validate us, we'll never be validated. If we look for others to affirm us, we'll never be affirmed. If we look for others to show us who we are, watch this. We will never learn who we are. As a matter of fact, we will be turned into how, what Howard Thurman says, I talked about last week, puppets, mm -hmm. right? And you'll be, you'll be played on the strings of, of people who are using you for their agenda, right. and you're never living into who you are, who you are authentically created to be. And so that that bridge right there, if you don't know, if you don't hear nothing else in that in that song, that bridge right there goes right back, as Dr. Small said, to that Psalm 139, right? Um, in terms of who it is that we are, who it is that we've been created to before you were formed in Je Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mama's womb, right? right? God knew you and had a plan for you. And so all of these types of things, and, and I hope, and I hope what you all are seeing is the bridges that are being made and not even bridges but how one is with the other there there's no there's no separation in this sacred and secular piece right, right? there's no separation there because god is in it all now you know a whole nother bible study would be about the difference between sacred and profane that's something totally different but don't, god is in it all don't steal my lesson don't steal my lesson yeah go <laughs> my bad. My bad. right no 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 because we're gonna deal with that but see here's the other side here's the other side right um and as we talk, right, as you hear, as you hear the words of that and see what power, see, and see, that's the awesome thing about music just in general, right? We hear different things and we get fed by different things, right? But descriptions is, are, are what blow my mind, right? Yeah. Like when I, when I hear the descriptions, right, until the day is night and night becomes the day, until the right. trees and seas just up and fly away, right? The impossibilities, the infinite possibilities of God's divine love, it speaks to the same way that God feels about us, right? That God's love is not endless. God's love is not limited. God said, God, go, I'm going to love you until the day that is the day that are no more right? God, watch this. Here's the power. Here's the power of the Holy Spirit. He says, loving you until the day that you are me and I am you. 
right? Right, right. The whole idea of becoming, what does it mean to become and to walk in this space, right? To understand that love is infinite and love is divine and love speaks to us in that way, right? That this thing is, is on a continuum. And so we need to understand, right, that even in the, the, the rhythm and the blues of it, that there's still power, right? That we continue to be fed, we continue to, to, to be reminded, right? That there is no limit to how the spirit speaks to us and how God continues to move, right? So let's what? Let's, what? Cause, Cause here's the other piece of that, right? Even in that song, you are hearing your story. Right, right, right. right. Just like the songs of scripture remind the people of their story. You are hearing your story. Right, right, right. Listen, listen. The song as is scripture. <laughs> it is, right, right. Look, that's, that's the, the other song point. by Frankie Beverly that you just said, Joy and Pain, that's scripture. Right, right. You have to. Hold in this scripture. Right. You have to, at the risk, at the risk of our holy watchers right now thinking this sounds irreverent, you can't write that without the Holy Spirit. You can't write it. You can't write it without the Holy Spirit. Right. You can't that do you it. Can't write it without the Holy Spirit. You have to understand that power of self-definition and self-becoming. Audrey Lord says, if you don't define yourself by yourself, you will be consumed by others and eaten alive. That there has to be this recognition of who you are. And it's scary work. Can we talk about it that is. real quick? That's, it's that's, scary that's work. It. Sure, it's scary to identify. It's scary to step out and say, this is who I am. It's scary to step out and say, this is what I want to be. It's scary to say that this is where I believe the Lord is leading me. And we see that in the text. People who are being called to, to do great things, people who have been called to lead movements, people who have been called to step out. It's a scary place to be, but it is authentic to the divine of our purpose and our understanding. Duke, so because 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 take this, take it a step further, right? Movie we look, go back to Five Heartbeats, right? Right. Somebody told Donald Doug Matthews, you'll be a great writer. When you suffer more. When you suffer more. Right. And so the lyrics that come out of scripture and songs that we're talking about come out of this rhythm and blues. Right. And the right. rhythm that the blues gives us. Oh, right. that's good. Right. <laughs> right? The, yeah. the, the, the rhythm of life that comes out of having to live through blues. Right. right? Right. Um, um, you can't talk about knowing what it is whenever you around when you haven't, when you, ha if you haven't been through being lonely when somebody else is around, you can't talk about, you know, these love songs that we talk about without having, cause you're trying to put, you're trying to put lyrics right. to what it is that you're living. Right. Every, everybody, everybody of our age on this lesson and everybody who's going to watch this or is going to trip when I say this part, Mary J. Blige. Sir, for a lot of people, went through some so much stuff and wrote about it. Yep, right. And there are sisters and even dudes who listen to Mary and be like, Yo, I mean, like, I know people, I know people who have changed their lives because of my life. The song, <laughs> because my of life. my life, right. I know people who have changed their life because of my life, right? right. You know, so I mean, it, it, it is, it is that part. We're gonna do, let's do one more, let's do one more. So, here it is. Uh all right. um, so what happens is we get into this place, just what Dr. Williams was saying, when folk start to look at this thing with, if, if I can call it an unrealistic piety um, mm -hmm. or a false piety, right? Mm -hmm. That talks about music being demonic or evil and not of God, right? And so it is not that music is demonic or not of God, right? When we talk about meaning, Right. And, and then you start talking about message. Right. It's not the music itself. It's the message. Right. right. It's not the genre that is evil. <laughs> right. It becomes that there are some like all music that's good and bad. OK, like all music that's good and bad. So let's let's step down off of that horse and act yeah. like, you know, everything is good. Right. That yeah. there, there is there is good and bad. R&B, there's good and bad hip hop, there's good and bad blues, there's good yeah. and bad gospel. It's good and bad gospel. Some gospel right. I can't stand. Right, right. So, so, so there's, so it's, it's message and meaning that ultimately bring power and efficacy to it. All right. So listen. So here's one. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do this one first because, um, we talk. Oh no, no, I'm not. I'm gonna do the psalm first. I'm gonna do the psalm first. So Psalm 13. Look at Psalm 13. Psalm uh, 13. How yeah. long, Lord? How long? Will you forget me forever? Is the My question. God. How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? 
Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death and my enemies will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. <laughs> so here it is. Here's the remix. Here's the, re the, the, the R&B remix. Rockets. Moonshots, Moon. spend it on the have not money. We, we make, make. for we see it, you take it. Inflation, no chance to increase finance. Bills pile up sky high. Send that boy off to die. Oh, crime is increasing. increasing. Trigger happy. Policing. He wrote that in seven. It's spreading. God knows where we're headed. Then he says, Oh, make me want to holler. The way they, the way do, they my do my life. life. Make me want to holler the way they do my life. This ain't living. This ain't living. Throw up both my hands. And, and, and listen, we talk yeah. about context, right? Out of right. which that scripture comes. And out of which that album comes, right? right, right. That album comes in 1971 when Marvin was, was tripping on the war because I think his brother got sent to war or something like that. And even when Smokey Robinson went uh, to Hawaii where he was recording it, and Smoke was like, yo, we got a deadline on this. Smoke, and Marvin was like, yo, God is writing this album, Smoke. That whole album is a sermon, right? Right. It, from, right. from start to finish. And so the context out of which it comes brings forth all of the feelings and emotions and all and the guttural responses right right that we going through and that we dealing with and it ain't nothing wrong with that right <laughs> right right it ain't. It, it, right there's there's nothing it, it's not vilif it's not vilification to say that you are hurting right yes this is this is part and part and parcel of the problem of what we do with this Western idea of spirituality, because we talk about God being this healer and God being this restorer, but we don't we, we don't bring stuff to God. Right. We we and, and we're, we don't bring it to God enough to bemoan and say, God, I'm hurting. To say, mm -hmm. God, I need this. This is unfair, right? Where is it, right? Where is your Where is your justice? Where is your power? Where Where are you? Speak to me, God. I need you to speak to me. Right? And what did you say? You said Gay wrote that when? 1971. He wrote it in 1971. Trigger happy policing. Police. It's 2022. Listen. listen. And listen, the so 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 take it a step further. We talk about Bible scripture and all this type of stuff. Scripture written all these years ago. And somebody who feels like they've been said they've asked God, how long, Lord? Right. Gay Marvin wrote this 51 years ago. How long, Lord? We got trigger happy policing. Inflation right. increasing. And, and the wages don't go up with inflation. Right. Right? right. What, what what yo? It so and so as, as Dr. Small has said, yo, what comes out of this R and B is like our story, and what comes out of it is the emotional um crying out. Right? How long, Lord? The emotional crying out that connects the rhythm. And blues with the rhythm of the blues. Right, right. Doc, Dr. John Jackson, who's sharing with us, good to see you, man. Thanks for sh getting on. Dr. John Jackson said it was Marvin Gaye's brother who went to Vietnam, and he shared some of the horrors and the stories with him. There it is. I, I he, shared, he shared some of the stories that he went through and experienced in that process. Um, and so to take that, so here it is, the artist takes that, right? And we minimize, right? We minimize, watch this, yeah. we minimize the artistry of a King David. We minimize that. We minimize yeah. the fact that he was a musician. We yeah. minimize Asaph's artistry. We minimize yeah. the musicianship and the artistry of the psalmist who articulate. Yeah. We, this This is, it is, watch this. It is scripture, but it is song. It's movement music. Right. <laughs> right. It is yeah. scripture, but it is song. And so when we articulate, when we, when we read the Psalms, we need to understand that we are reading songs S-O-N-G-S. We are reading songs that folks are dealing with their emotions and their connections. And so when we talk about 
how we articulate, how we express this feeling, how we share in these particular moments, we, we are reminded, we are empowered, we are encouraged because we hear that we are not the only ones, right? right? We are not the only ones who experience this thing. We are not the only ones who go through this. How do you feel? How did you feel like um, when you hear Keep Your Head to the Sky by Earth, Wind, and Fire? And listen. <laughs> Right. I mean, I mean, just the encouragement of it, just the just the whole idea of what it means to push forward of yeah. what it means to understand that you're not the only one that you that there's that there's yeah. hope in that there's hope in places. Right. And and to speak to that. What is what does it mean to hear uh, Bill Withers say lean on me? Man. You know what I'm saying? It, so. So when we articulate um feelings when we articulate through musical expression it it does evolve it doesn't devolve it evolves in different ways of expressing it and as we talk about um what it means to engage in different forms of music reggae music hip-hop music right and see i think i think the thing for me is as we come, as we wind this thing down, I think what, what what blows my mind is that the experiences speak the same through the genres. Dude. Right? It's through, a different way. It's the right. same. I mean, it is, it is, yeah. but it but it speaks to yeah. the same condition of yeah. the African throughout the world. If yeah. you listen to Fela Kuti. And yes, Afrobeat. If you yes, listen sir. to reggae and Peter Tosh and Bob Marley and Bunny Whaler, if you listen to R and B of Marvin Gaye and Bill Withers and Earth Wind and Fire and James Brown, if you listen to the blues, right, a John Lee Hook and Bessie Smith, if you look at these forms of music, they tell the same story. Even bringing it to, more current, even bringing them more current, a PJ Morton, right, right, or go to jazz or Gregory Porter, right. right? Right. It's, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Dude. Listen, you, listen, you, listen. Hold up. Station break real fast. If y'all have not heard Gregory Porter, kind of jazz vocalist, and if y'all have not heard PJ Morton, y'all need to listen to that music and be fed on the real to real. Like for real, for real. Y'all need to be fed by PJ Morton and y'all yeah. need to be fed by um uh uh Greg, Greg Porter. Porter. Y'all need to be fed by that. That's that's that is that is spiritual music. You will be yeah. uplifted, you will be encouraged, you will be taught. I mean, those kinds of things that can continue continue to speak. So um, and let me say this real quick, and I know we gotta yeah. wind up. But the genius and artistry of the music, right? Are these masters, and I and I dare say these creators, creatives who are who are in some senses leading us, right? But they they know how to put certain lyrics with certain music that makes you feel a certain way. Right. Right. A certain. That's, so that's a whole nother. Right. Right. They know how to do yeah, That's a whole nother. Yeah. Thing. yeah. So, I mean, so we're not talking about when we talk about R&B, we're talking about the genre of music that speaks to extol certain emotions. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and and there are even different expressions in that. Right. Um, you know, you get a bad rap when you talk about, you know, the the touch you, the rub you, you know, you know, all of that kind of stuff, which minimizes, right? Mm -hmm. And and I'm not saying I'm not vilifying that. I'm just saying it's 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 a different thing. Um, and so we can't vilify the music because there's power if we That's hear. Right. If That's right. There's inspiration if we hear. There's the divine in it if we hear, right? Your your African ears hear the power of yeah. music. You hear it. You hear you hear it. Um Tony, Tony, um, what's my man? Uh Tony oh. Terry. Ever, Tony Terry, not Tony, 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 Tony is, is good too, but Tony Terry, everlasting love, right? I yeah. mean, there's there's ways to 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 connect, there's ways to operate, and that's so connect. And it doesn't always have to, you know, push um the 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 traditional format of spiritual music to be spiritual. And I think that's what Dr. Uh, Williams and I are just trying to articulate tonight. So my brother. So can I, say, but can I say, I want to say this one last thing in part, and, that, and that's this. Your homework for this week <laughs> is to get you a song. Ooh. Get you a song. Get a song or some songs mm -hmm. 
wherein they already have it. They already have it. I mean, I know they get. I know they got right. I know yeah. you got it right. Get you a song, some songs, and start looking at those songs as scripture. Right. Because mm. they are. Mm. Mm. Right. Look at those songs of scripture, because some of those songs will get you just like just like a a, a scripture like uh, Psalm twenty seven uh, will get you through. A song by Frankie Beverly will get you through. Right. right. Just like a song by by you know Psalm thirteen to get you through a song a song by Jill Scott to get you through. Right. Mm. Get you a song and, and watch this. And I told you last week. My dad told me this. He said my dad because. He was like, he was asking, you know, was I playing music? I was like, I haven't been playing music. He's like, yo, music is spirit. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Spirit. My dad and my dad and a good friend told me. My dad and a good, really, really, really good friend told me. He's like, she was like, um, music is spirit, right? Get you some music. Put some music on. Right. Because music, music will help you be able to navigate. Um, and I had to start doing that, even thinking about coming to coming along, because like I've you know, but mu- music will be it in the car, be it in your study, be it you know, music will help you navigate. And particularly, you get you that one good one that that will. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, and it's and it's all over. So yeah. so next week, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do next week? You tell me what we got next week. Next week, you want you want we could do we could do the reggae piece next week. We could do hip hop next week. What you what you what you feeling? What you feeling? I don't know. We're gonna leave it as a surprise. Y'all gotta oh, come back. Bad. All right, we're gonna surprise y'all. We're gonna surprise y'all. We're gonna surprise, uh, we gonna surprise y'all. All right, we're gonna do it. But, but it's all but look, it's all revolutionary and, and yeah. we'd be fed. So um we told y'all it was gonna be um kind of energetic. <laughs> it was kind of all over the place. Um, but you know, hopefully you got the lesson and you feel what it is we were trying to do with what we were trying to say. Um so we hope this was helpful. We hope this was enlightening. We really, really do. I, I, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of my brother. We really hope you were enlightened and saw some things in a different way and a different kind of perspective and can appreciate uh, those things without feeling, without vilifying yourself, without feeling right. guilt, without right. feeling, feeling shame and all that other kind of stuff where you can actually understand and connect um, with your spirit and your energies and your emotions um, to connect. Um, so, Thank you all. Yo, listen, y'all have been wonderful in regards to the comments and stuff like that. Really appreciate it. Um, and we will share. Uh, we will we will share. Um, uh, we okay. We're gonna have something for y'all next week. We're gonna have something for y'all next week. Um, yeah, we're gonna have something for y'all next week. Uh, so appreciate it, uh, Doc. You want to pray us out? Absolutely, absolutely. Let's pray. God, how we are grateful for this time. We are grateful for this space. We thank you for the gift of music. Mm. Thank you, God, that we can um, find meaning in melodies. Mm. Thank you, God, that through lyrics and beats that are laid, we can learn lessons and also learn how to live. Thank you, God, for gifting and blessing creatives with the imagination and the inspiration to sometimes call us to be insurgents against the empire Mm -hmm. and another times calls us to, to be calmed by your presence. God, we thank you for this time of virtually and we pray that you bless each home into which this went. And we thank you, God, for, um, your grace and your mercy that that inspires us and and keeps us and and guides us and protects us. God help us to find a song. My God, my God, a song we can sing in the midnight hour and at noonday. Bless us to find that song that helps us remind helps remind us of not only our story but our strengths. Mm-hmm. Bless us to find those songs that inspire us and our purpose and our pathways as we go forward. Thank you, God, for this time. And we pray that you empower us as we leave uh, together virtually. Empower us to be well, to be authentic, and to be all you've created us to be. So I pray we offer in Jesus' name. People of God together say amen. 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 Bless y'all. Deuces. Peace. Peace.
We staying on, we gonna get back on. You gonna end the live? Uh, hold on. Guess I need to, huh?